What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel Vikings season 5 episode 4 Don't you know who I am? Ivar the boneless you cannot kill me That dude holy shit that scene He's fucking scary motherfucker. That was so intense and just like I'd probably sit there and be like, I'm not charging this dude. I'd be scared as fuck too. I don't care if he can or can't move his legs. Yeah. I I I mean that's one way to like win a fight is like you bring out the crazy. Yeah. The literal crazy. Like it, it was just one of those moments where it was like, this dude feels like he's on top of the world. He knows people are fucking scared of him, and he's just screaming. Like, I mean, if I was if I was Uba and like standing like back there, I'd be like, oh, like, what do I do now? Yeah. And like, yeah. <laughs> it's I a was really... like, I was like, oh, is he waiting like to see if he dies? But no, I think he was just like kind of. I think he was in a little in shock or yeah. shock. Yeah, yeah he just like... wanted to see what was gonna happen. Wow. <laughs> like this dude, I said it during the episode, with the look in his eyes, the hood. Just kind of lurking in the background when he wasn't in the middle of all the shit screaming with blood pouring down his face. He had such a like a Sith Lord vibe to him. I even put that out on Twitter. I can see but, that. But like I can see this that. dude, regardless of like he he he's totally falling into the category of like heel, like cool the cool heel guy, yeah, like the yeah. bad guy. The bad guy who's totally off the rocker does really horrible things, but it's just like you want to see him succeed, or just want to see him. Period. That's true. You just want to see him. Like he is interesting. He's fascinating. His when it comes to like battle tactics, he's on point. Like he is super smart when it comes to that shit. He's not handling the stuff with his brothers. I don't. That's a really tough situation because he's basically outcasting himself well, amongst his brothers. But, but Uba was like deuces. Yeah, Uba bounced and Vitzer stuck. He he kind of made a. He, he, he changed his mind. with me. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Okay. Like I mean, how do you say no to? Uh, Uba's I mean, like, fuck you, dude. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so he's heading back to Katika. I'm really interested to see what happens. Do you think there. he actually goes home, or do you think he goes somewhere else? I mean, he is married still, isn't he? As far as we know, yeah. And his wife is still at home. <laughs> but, like, regardless of who's in charge there, that's still his home. He still grew up there. So, like, I would imagine, like, that's where he's going to, like, that's what he's going to do. Right. Um, I'm wondering what Lagatha's going to think when he arrives. By himself. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, without his brothers. Right. He's He's got a small crew with him. But that's a really interesting situation. Are we going to see some sort of, like... Is is Uba gonna basically like turn completely against his brother and try to like fight him one day at some point? Is he gonna try to like tell Lagatha to be like, hey, you know, let's go back and take him out and settle the land that's ours? Because he still thinks that land's theirs. He doesn't know any better. Yeah, he doesn't know. So like, I'm really curious to see how that situation is gonna play out because he's really smart. He's definitely got the Ragnar brain and, and kind yeah. of like evaluation of situations type of stuff that, that that Ragnar had. So I wonder what kind of plan that he might come up with, what kind of like thinking he's gonna do on this situation because he, you clearly just can't go head on with Ivar. Like it, he's too powerful like here, he's too yeah. stubborn. It's not, that's definitely not the approach. You gotta find a way to basically use his craziness against him. And I don't, I don't know. I'm very curious to see what Uba ends up doing because this whole situation is crazy. Yes, I agree. But I mean, I was thinking like it's interesting to see like the characters how they've each taken a piece of Ragnar and what characteristics appear more in each child. Yeah, it's like if you turned Ragnar's aggression up to a thousand, that's it's basically Ivar. what Ivar would be. And it's like you could see Uba in his like body movements and his like the way he's, he's like calculating things. I feel like he's way and... more reasonable. Oh yeah. He, you know, I I feel like he's. He wants to talk. He yes. he wants he likes the idea of trying he has to like the negotiate. Intrigue. Yes, he he's, he, and he's observant. Yeah. And then Spitzer is kind of like. I feel like he's got like the hand to hand combat of Ragnar because yeah, that he dude does. was like, 
he, he he showed some shit off in that last episode with his battle. And Sigurd, I felt like he was like on the more like not like really sensitive, but he was seemed a little bit more of a gentle yeah person. I mean, he was a smart ass though. Totes. He I mean, loved, they're all smart asses. He loved poking at Ivar, and it got him an axe in the chest. I feel like Switzer is also gentle in some ways. Yeah, I could kind of see that. I feel like Switzer and he's kind of the one were kind of similar. He's the he seems like more the one that's like you turn up you turn the knob and like he gets cranked up and he yeah. gets wild and crazy like a friggin' Viking does in battle. Yeah. But yeah, like the all of the all the sons of Ragnar are very interesting and of course Bjorn still, you know, still a son of Ragnar, he's still out there. He's on a boat going to the Mediterranean with uh, stupid faces, I mean, uh fine hair's brother. So that's I'm very interested to see where they're going and how they're going to handle the situation. Notice how he won't even say his name. King Harold. No, I mean like we don't even say the brother's name because it's like. I don't know. I I can't remember his name. I mean maybe he'll become a bigger player and I could remember his name, but I think I've I've only heard it said like once or twice total. Yeah, you always like call his him brother. brother. Yeah, his brother like, fine hair said it in the last episode. Yeah, um, but I, yeah. I probably wrote it down, but I'm I'm very curious to. Dan. Yeah, there you go. Afton. I'm very curious to see what that journey looks like because he was informed that it's better to look like traitors and show up with a few ships versus showing up essentially with an army of ships because yeah. you'll die. Yeah. <laughs> so that that sounds fascinating. Not traitors, but like salesmen. Right. <laughs> like that kind of proposition's like. I wonder if that like is a challenge to him. Be like, well, fuck it. Let's just show up with everyone and see what happens. Yeah, right. That that's a very curious situation. And we've got Floki. What the fuck? Um. Yeah. I, after... I mean, like things coming out of the water, just random shit randomly. Ran just... like women, women spitting bees. Another one turning into friggin' crows. Just like his hand healing you you said at the end of last episode that you think that he might have died because he seems like he's tripping well the fact that he's like healed and it's like Is after after the episode and watching it two more times because i do that through editing i think that actually might be you think he actually died i think he's actually dead oh because what like unless he's just completely that? hallucinating that he's healed or he was hallucinating that the cut was ever there i mean he is pretty fucked up between starvation not De having enough dehydration, water yeah, yeah. Like he's probably all all screwed up in the brain and the body right now so who knows i would not at all be shocked if he died and that he's like living there as like whatever but he's supposed to be a seer so then there's also that yeah who knows i'm not Crazy sure but the floki stuff. the floki stuff is super interesting because He's just roaming around by himself on this really awesome place, and he's seeing things, and he's Which, tripping, and he's talking to himself, essentially, even though he's talking to the gods. Iceland. Well, I I mean, I definitely missed the sign that said, Welcome to Iceland, so... No, no, it's just, like, that was brought up that it, it could possibly be Iceland, yeah. and I was thinking... I've never been, so I wouldn't know. Oh, I mean, just from pictures that I've seen of the world, I was thinking... Iceland or like New Zealand, yeah. but like I don't think New Zealand has like black beaches. But regardless, it's a beautiful place, and Floki is tripping. Totes. And of course, we can't get into this episode without talking about super amazing warrior Bishop Heedman, dude, because this guy talk about level of intensity. I think like, we could just call him a warrior bishop. Yeah, I mean he is. He is super, super, in, like, every moment he's been in that we've seen him so far, and it hasn't been a lot, he is on another level of intensity with everything that he deals with, everything, whether he's using that sword or the other sword, it goes both ways. But, like, even when he's just, like, talking amongst his own folks, and even when, like, Alfred's, like, we need to listen to their their offer, and shouldn't we be merciful and, like, forgiving and all this, and he's like, yes. And he like slams his sword down. It's like, dude, chill out. Like, mm. pump the brakes. And he had that moment with Ivar and was like, dude, these two are going to fucking fight. I want to see that. And that shit, shit, like, I don't know how Ivar could pull that off. Because, I mean, the bishop is a fucking stud. 
and Ivar, I mean, rolling around and doing rolls and however, like, his battle tactics are really interesting. He's got to throw that axe once. But I, I, I have a feeling he's going to figure out a way to be mobile on his feet. Like, he created those, those braces. braces. And, and, I mean, he's obviously can't be mobile in those. Like, he could stand him up, but he can't move around a lot. Yeah, he can't be, like, fast. I think he's going to well, figure I mean, it out. I don't know. He's good. I think he's going to figure it out. I think he's going to figure something out. He's fucking and scary. And those well. two, on both sides of these two, like, like armies, holy shit. Like, that, that little stare down they had was just, like, really intense. He pointed a sword at him, and Ivar's like... Come on, dude. Let's go. I know, right? He's like, oh, you I... can't kill me. He was like the only guy that wasn't scared of Ivar. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, Ape Wolf kind of yelled at him and called him out while he was hiding. But yeah. I don't know. I'm really into this season so far. Totes. Do you have any other thoughts? No. Let's go. Oh, Gibraltar. The pillars of Hercules. They mark the entrance to the Mediterranean Sea. Look at that. My father would have relished this opportunity. I would still urge a question about these lands and peoples. I want to go to Rome. Rome is the center of the new world. Not anymore, Bjorn Ironside. The Roman Empire is no more. Its power is mostly gone. Then if not Rome, then where? There is an island. Not so far away. Sicily. Oh, hey! It is our armies that suffer terrible defeat and loss. So in truth, we cannot think of attacking and trying to reclaim the town. I agree. We must retreat. Return to Wessex, raise another army, and leave them for now in possession of York. I disagree. <laughs> oh. I had a vision. Did you know? I saw the two witnesses who are the prophets standing before the god of the earth. And if any man should harm them, fire would proceed from their mouths and devour their enemies. I saw all the dead bodies of the wicked lying in the street of the great city, for there was no one left to bury them. And all those dead bodies were of pagan Northmen. They died because they starved and were walled up in a great city. Pulling a Ragnar, huh? Is that what we should do? Prevent the Northmen from coming and going. Trap them. Starve them. Force them to surrender. We will starve them out with God's help. Oh, he will help us. Like, if I ever met him, I'd be like, can you chill? Like, does your intensity always got to be turned up to a thousand? Like, even, even when he says, I agree, it's just like, whoa. All right, I got it. You agree. You get it. <laughs> Such passion. You are more than ever welcome back to a hearth, Ube. Then you must have heard of Sigurd's death at the hands of Ivar and his challenge to Bjorn that he was the leader of the great army. Ivar is a different story. He tore us apart. As far as I am concerned, I am now at war with Ivar. Oh, shit. He verbalized it. My brother Vitzer, he has decided with Ivar, so he's now my enemy. Oh, shit, dude. Let us make a pact. I will support you against Ivar and Vitzer, if... He agreed to support me against King Harold. You see, that would make me an ally of my mother's killer. Your choices are all difficult to bear. But for the sake of the good folk of Catechet. I mean, is she ever gonna, like... He is a son of Ragnar, and you're gonna be killed by a son of Ragnar. I don't think it's gonna be Uba. I don't I... You never know. I mean, it makes the most I sense know, that it's... Ivar. Still be Uba. I think Lagatha is losing her power. Here she goes again. I think yep. the gods have deserted her. There is only one man who can replace Ragnar as the ruler of Kattegat. It's you, Uba. Even more reason now that I believe that he could be the one. Yeah, now that just... I mean, it made more sense when she just spit it out. She's gonna keep pushing that narrative about Lagatha losing her power and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. The ruler is a Byzantine commander called Euphemius. He's already legendary. He attempted to overthrow the Holy Roman Emperor. He failed and came here to Sicily. We will have many adventures here. And if we live, many stories to tell at the Great Hall. If we live. I mean... Oh, oh shit! Looks like they will go hungry again. Damn. That's a strong plan. We're almost out of food. There's sickness in the town. 
What are we going to do? The Saxons are in their own country. They can be reinforced and grow stronger, while every day we just grow weaker. What are you really saying? That I was wrong not to negotiate with the Saxons and that Dupa was right? Yes. Who betrayed me like his little faithful dog? I am no one's dog. Ivar. Oof, oof. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Uh-oh. Now Spencer regrets it. Now he regrets it. How the fuck is Ivar going to handle this kind of adversity? I don't know, but if that were me, I would be going to fucking low blows. Oh yeah? We wouldn't talk about me? We are equal to Lagat the Torvi, you and me. We are all equal. You're right, Magret. Oh shit. Yep. We are all equal. I didn't know you were listening. Bitch! <laughs> I could kill you for your talk of betrayal, but I am sick of betrayal. Conspire against me if you want to, but if you can she find is the horrified. To be loyal, then I will respect you like no other. You were a slave who had no choice, but now, as a free woman, you choose to love me. <laughs> I, if you're gonna talk shit behind my back, you better be able to say that shit in front of me. She was not prepared for that at no, all. No, she just wanted to like talk some shit to like she wants, she just wants to get be buddies. On her side, yeah. yeah. Talking shit about others is not how you get friends, just saying. This is my cousin, Manel. I offer you my allegiance and my absolute loyalty. You are more welcome than I can say. Bishop Hegman, your reputation as a religious scholar and as a warrior goes before you. And since I came here to fight, I can think of no two men I'd rather stand beside in the shield wall. Don't flatter them too much. You'll make them vain. The Bible tells us that all is vanity, and yet here we are, about God's work. The Bible also tells us to show no mercy to unbelievers. Against these devils and pagans, we are the wrath of God. Wow. <laughs> like, A simple hello yeah. would have done it's just like, fine. We're not going to war right now. Just pump the brakes. He's into it. He's Fuck yeah, he's intense. into it. He like gets me like ready to go to go yeah, fight man, somebody. Yeah, man, go. Get a shield run! Holy shit! Of course we are traitors. The coffee boats we brought. Believe me, a day of spragma leftes is this day after. Who can Bitch! What the fuck you doing? <laughs> um, no. No. He says, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> he caught you. And now all of a sudden, it's like, don't backpedal, fuck. backpedal. Don't fuck with Bjorn, dude. You are not the only Northmen who have appeared in the Mediterranean. The Emperor Michael himself has a personal bodyguard of Rus Vikings from the Kievan Empire. Commander Euphemius wants you to be his bodyguards. Tell him we agree. His bodyguards in the background are like, what? What about us? <laughs> it's like, sorry, yo. You're no Viking. Yeah, right. Who is she? Garcia. She is a Christian, a nun. She was in charge of a monastery and writes holy songs. The commander says that he stole her from the holy city of Byzantium and that she is so famous, the emperor sentenced him to death for abducting her. That's fucked. Will I ever see my son again? Yes, you will see him again, but in terrible circumstances. Oh, shit. The consequences of Ragnar's death are not yet played out. You have only seen the beginning of the end. Yikes. Now prepare yourself for what is to come. What is to come? Tell me. Too much knowledge is an agony. Prepare yourself. Shit. Does this dude, like, give her good news ever mm. doesn't seem that way lord odin did i make the right choice give me a sign help me 
What is my fate? <gasps> oh shit. That's not a good sign. That shit ain't it. Basically that was, yeah, you made the wrong choice, you should have left. Nothing is as it seems. Commander Euphemius isn't really the commander here after all. An Arab leader called Ziyadat Allah, the Emir of Ephidlia in Kyoran, agreed to invade the island on Euphemius' behalf in return for a yearly tribute. Where's Kyoran? In Africa. This guy is very helpful. You wouldn't happen to be conspiring against us now, would you, Cinder? I was only trying to find out what was going on here. Some wanderers are really gods in disguise. Do I look like a god? Want me to see that, Allah? Is this his version of graffiti? In my vision, I saw the bodies of the pagans heaped in the streets, dead of disease and starvation. And so it has come to pass. They are burning their dead. Mm. So indeed it seemed. <laughs> Was that a smile? Did he just kind of smile? No. Let their condition worsen further still, until only creatures of rags and bones wander the streets of York. Then we attack. Surely you see the signs for yourself. No, I also see other signs. How you put yourself forward above me to take command. Oh boy. Even though I am your king! Ooh. Was that a, you're getting too cocky, you need to calm down. King of kings, I am your humble servant. Do with me as you will. I will fuck you up. <laughs> uh, I, Bishop is like, just turn around, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Just turn around. Let's just, I'll just kill you, dude. I think you're not humble, but still you are my servant, as well as the Lord's. And we shall proceed together, for the sake of our country, for the sake of England. My king. I feel like he thought it was a smart dude. I mean, that was like... That was definitely necessary. He, he gets it. I know you're not humble, but we're gonna do this shit. So he had get to, your ass up and let's go. He had to put him in his place. Yeah, but I don't think Bishop liked it. I know he didn't. Look at him, he's like, I feel so embarrassed. <laughs> but Eat the Wolf needed to take some like, oh shit. Walking around. Some like true leadership stand. I don't understand why you pretend to burn the bodies of our dead. It's part of my plan. Oh. Did you really think that I didn't have a plan? Huh? Of course I have a plan. I'm a cripple. with an idiot. Sure that. I found something out. My plan is based upon what I found out. Dude. He's walking around. Dude, he is like two steps ahead of Bishop Hayden, like almost every time. Yeah, I'm like super impressed actually. Pretending to burn your dead. Yeah. I missed it. Where was the welcome to sign? I didn't see it. Shut your face. Not a real person. <laughs> Alright, Floki. Hello, Father. I can find it hooks. If that's a mere grand for me, I'll smoke him at the end of this old and sacred thing. I'm going to find it out. I see if he had excuse for it after the heim manana. Or pure that they have some eager by the who or red that through what freak and the rinka. I kept them picked bark in a good reign. Stadra of Sergadra of Oakland and Mundum of Goodum Theda. Dude, that is such an insane looking beach. <laughs> I love his laugh. I love so Loki funny. so much. Yeah. He's so great. I have made up my mind. I asked the gossip for advice. But there is only so much the humans can do to deny the force of fate. What is your decision? What kind of whale is that? <laughs> a minky. And why do we hunt whales? Every part of the whale is useful, down to the smallest drop of its oil, which keeps our world alight. Wow, I think the whale is a god, and each killing a sacrifice. What is your decision? 
I agree to marry you. What? Good. I couldn't have waited any longer. Astrid, you've got to have a backup plan. She's gonna yeah, kill she's him. She's a queen now. I feel like she's gonna kill him. So you come to be married. You want to be man and wife. For although the fetters of marriage will be invisible, like the cords that bind Fenrir, they will still bind you. Yes, it's what I want to do. Perhaps my luck has finally changed. <laughs> Sounds a little sketchy. It does. The look on her face was like, mm. Because she was thinking about Lagatha. Mmm, I'm not sure. That is so cool. I mean, scary, but also amazing. Yeah. I wonder where he's off to next. They're gone. The Northmen, the ships, they're all gone. What is Ivar's plan? I would just be like, burn it down. Just burn it. We'll rebuild it. Burn it. Now I would regret that decision. Thank God you didn't burn it. Why are the rats above ground? Oh. What oh. the fuck? No, cliffhanger! That, no! That's where it's gonna leave us off. Damn. Did Ivar take everyone underground? What is he gonna do though? But I mean, look at Bishop being all smart and shit. Why are the rats above ground? I mean, he's very observant, he's very smart. I mean, he's still getting kind of punked by Ivar though. Yes. It's like his vision kind of played out, but in his vision, it didn't show it him being like a joker and him being screwed with. Like it played out in uh, his, like uh, in his of, brain it played out. Yeah, but of course it was in his favor. What? His vision. I know, but I'm, what I'm saying is like it actually played out to an extent. Yes. In his brain, it's exactly what he what he saw. I know, but now he's like, mm, he's, maybe there's something wrong. Now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he clearly thinks that because yes. the fact that he immediately was just like, oh, what are the rats doing? Why are they like Aethelwolf had no idea. He didn't. He, he didn't, didn't catch on. Yeah, he didn't put that together. But it was a little sketch. What, but what, what advantage does being underground right now do for Ivar and all of his peeps? They're hiding, but and they're going to like, are they going to like trap up. them? Are they going to trap them in? Are they going to flank them somehow? Or are they going to like, yeah, they gotta, right? I don't know. I'm, I'm really curious, but it, yeah, like I'm, I'm trying to think of, I was, I like the last plan was obvious as it started to play out. I feel like this one isn't as obvious. Maybe it is. Maybe I'm just not seeing it. But again, I'm not a military strategist, so I don't know. I'm, all I know is that I'm fascinated. Yes. We've got fucking Ivar walking the streets now being like, duh, brother, I have a plan. Just fucking upright. Like, fake burning bodies because that's, that's what he's expecting. Like, he knows that's what the English are expecting. He's like, oh, they think they're starving us out. They think we're going to burn our bodies because they're sick. It's just going to play right into, like, it's playing perfectly into his hands. This is unbelievable. When really they were just cooking a bunch of meat. That's nuts. Are they going to eat that? I would hope they didn't waste whatever that was. I mean, it kind of looked like guts, so I'm not sure. Ew! But regardless, like, this is a fascinating game of chess right now. Like, Ivar, he's, like, he's ahead. He's, like, two or three steps ahead. I want to know what's in his brain that's showing him 
their plan. Right. He's like, oh, hey, by, by the way, Ivar, this is what they're thinking. Ragnar's with him. Or Ragnar's with him. Ragnar's leading the way. Maybe. Ragnar on the brook. Mm, even the cat got scared. Yeah. Wow, this is interesting. And the whole, this whole thing with, with Floki, too, is just so fascinating. I love it. So now he's convinced that he shouldn't be living there alone, that he needs to go bring more humans. He needs to share. Yeah. He needs to share the wealth, basically. He should not be the only one living in that amazing place. He's so, he's gonna go so he's going to go recruit some folks. Yeah. Like, hey, I found this dope place. Come hang out with me. How do you find it again, though? That's the thing. I, I, I don't know if he has... He has no idea. Well, I mean, sailors, who knows? you gotta know yeah. they, where you are. He's probably got an amazing sense of direction and just amazing sense of where he is in the world. I don't know. I'm just guessing because they don't have like, even when like when when uh, Bjorn pulls out the map. Like, how the fuck do you know where you are on that map? Like, honestly. Well, I mean, yeah. How many landmarks can they put on that kind of map? Yeah, it, it's all it's all really amazing that they were able to do all of this back in the day. Like. I don't even know how I drove from my friend's house to my house back in the day when there was no map. Like, fuck. He has zero sense of I'm direction. I'm horrible. If I, you tell him north, he's like, is that left or right? Which one? I'm not that. Come on. Yes, you are. I do have a horrible... I would not answer with, is that left or right? <laughs> Bullshit. I wouldn't, I wouldn't I know. Have, I, I have receipts. I couldn't tell you where north is, but I wouldn't be like, is that up or down? Like, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, I'd be like, get off. Is, the, is that north? I'd be like, get off the freeway. That's south, right? That's south? Get off the westbound north, freeway south. and go north. What is that? That doesn't mean anything to me. It means make a right. I've been hit too many times in the head to know what north, south, east, and west is as I'm driving somewhere. The signs and the compass and the map tells me where to go. You suck. I would not survive in that world on the sea. Let's just Barely say survive in this yeah, world. Let's just say that. I would not survive at all in that world. If I had to like... If I had to use the friggin' sundial like like Ragnar was using on like no. hell no I I'd be like you lead us you navigate yeah I'll just hang out back here and be lost I'm I'm kind of good with the the you know you get that from your papa he's really he's great with sense he could be like oh north south like yeah. what how why you could be in a room and spin him in a circle he'll know where north south east and west is yes not me yes. I don't know where it is right now where's north that way. Yeah? Yes. Let's see. What a what a tangent we're on here. But I have compass. I have a compass on my phone. North, that way. No, it's north. That way. All right. That's what That's it, northeast. That's north. You yeah, were, you were right. She nailed it. She You're was welcome. right. She was right. She knows where north is. I couldn't tell you. Yeah. So like I'm really fascinated. The sun rises in the east and sets in the that west. That doesn't help somebody who doesn't know where the east is. <laughs> That's too bad. That doesn't, that doesn't work. It's just that I don't have a sense of direction. It's just discussions not... with Nikki and Steve. <laughs> I could rattle off all kinds of crazy sports things, but I can't tell you where North is. I'm sorry. I could edit a hell of a video, but I can't tell you where no South is. No real survival skills. Thank God I don't need them right now. <laughs> That's true. So, but if the apocalypse hits... That's sure. a hell of a tan. I'm going to be with you. You'll know where north, south, east, and west is. So you'll be well, fine. then you need to protect me. And I can use the compass on my phone. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> yeah. I can teach you jujitsu. Okay. I know that. Yeah. So that was a really fun tangent. Just make fun of Steven in a sense of direction. Great tangent. I'm fascinated to see where Floki goes and what happens with him. His story has been super fascinating. Holy shit. Lagatha getting more bad news. What the fuck? Ah, I... Is it going to be, like, bad news for her or bad news for Bjorn? I mean, I don't feel like anything is good for her right now because, like, Uva clearly is being swayed all of a sudden. And we do have that one prophecy just still sitting in the back, just that Ragnar's son's going to kill you. We don't know yeah. which one. Yeah. But, like, now it feels kind of clear that it might be Uva. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ivar's nowhere near in... in Fitzer, it's nowhere near her either right now. So it's like, he's the one there. He might have just gotten a little seed planted into his brain about being the ruler of Katika like his dad. 
So who knows? It, it makes sense. But again, they're really good at swerving us and, and making you see something over here when they're planning something over here. Yeah. So who knows? But she gets all kinds of bad news and just keeps like well, moving forward. Mar like, Marguerite's like, bitch. She got caught up and then she got caught and then she started crying and ran away like a little baby. If you're gonna talk shit, be able to say it to their face. Yeah, and don't don't act like that when you get caught. Yes. Just be like, I mean, oh shit, like, you, man, my bad, my bad. You know what, honestly, yes. If or let's like, fight. Yeah, if you're like, you know what, all right. I'm, I'm, just punch me in the face. Yes, just let's just get it over with. <laughs> just don't kill me. Yeah, right. But like, holy shit, like, like she was talking really loud too. It's like, don't you want to like, Make sure she's not around. Right. Like she keeps, she, she just continues to be like, Lagatha lost all her power. Okay, but she also, sucks now. also know your audience. I, if you're talking to Lagatha's, one of Lagatha's best That's friends. That's like the second time she's done that. Right? Like, shut up. What are you doing? That's just not a good, that's just not a good move. It's not a good look. Yeah, so that. That, that just makes you look bad. Right, but I, I, I'm I'm still more concerned for Lagatha. Like she's gonna, I, I this whole Ragnar's death thing, like the the effects of that not even starting. Basically, like it's basically gonna start now. Is what it sounds like. It just sounds crazy. Yeah. <sighs> that whole Bjorn stuff. I'm not sure where that's going. Yeah. It's all really interesting. He's wandering around a new place and embracing it and learning it. Now they're traveling somewhere else to go meet the real ruler. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's interesting. It, it, it's definitely not the top of the list of what's interesting right now. Well, and this Cassia, this uh, nun is what? Yeah. Well, I don't know how to take her. I, I'm, I'm a little like lukewarm on that story right now. I, like the whole Bjorn thing is a kind of on the back burner right now because I feel like some of these other storylines are just they're, insane. They're way more like um right now yeah like the whole stuff with He's ivar just more like long term right that ivar thing it feels like it's gonna like blow up next episode like it's gonna play out like everything that's going on with floki is just super interesting and really fascinating because it's very unknown like floki's kind of in the same kind of situation as bjorn where he's in a new world and he's trying to figure out what's going on yeah but floki is far more interesting than bjorn in terms right of the now. character yes i think he always has been oh okay um in my opinion he just he's just always more of like a wild card. He's kind of more interesting. Like Bjorn has had his moments for sure. Yeah. But like Floki is always like just the journey that we've been on with him has always been so hot and cold and like we've hated him and we've loved him and now it's just like what are you doing, dude? Are you even alive? Yes. <laughs> like what is going on? Like his ship is like perfectly fine, normal just sitting on the beach like waiting for him. Okay. Cool. Let's see what happens. So, do you have any other thoughts? No. All right, y'all, leave some comments down below. Let us know what you thought of that episode. And you can make fun of me all you want about north, south, east, and west and the directions. Don't make fun of me. It's fine. I don't mind. I can handle it. So, yeah, let us know what you thought. Leave them comments. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. And we will catch y'all later. Have a good one. Bye.